Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. My name is Paul Cairns and today we'll be discussing how to retain highlight and shadow detail for print. Um, when you're using your image editing programs for uh, your pictures to be used on the internet, um, you know, you can pretty much eyeball how you want it to look and it'll be fine. But when you're doing it for print, it's another story altogether. Um, because how, how inks work and how you know the, bl the blacks can clog up and uh, uh, the different papers uh, may have different effects on um, the highlights as well and uh, if you are going to do work for magazines or you want to make a book or you want to create high quality prints for exhibition or for your home uh, you may want to uh, really control the values of your highlight and your shadow details um, obviously this begins with creating a perfect exposed uh, file or negative to begin with. Um, doing that with your digital camera would mean using your histogram correctly and trying to keep uh, your exposure within the, uh, the walls of the histogram so you don't clip um, the image. Clipping is um, is something I'll show in the uh, well, I'll, I'll give you better visual representation in this video a little bit later on but uh, basically it's uh, the, wa the walls of your exposure it's called latitude and it's uh, if you go too far uh, to into the shadow area your blacks plug up and there's no detail in the blacks and if you go too much into the highlight area um, your highlight areas become blown out and you'll have no detail in there as well and the, that detail it, once it's gone it's gone and you won't be able to pull it out no matter what you try um, so obviously it's good to begin with trying to create a good exposed image to begin with and uh, that's another video tutorial which I think I've done one on histograms so you might want to search for that um, but once you have created the image um, you can actually control the values quite easily using this technique that I'm going to show you. Let's start. Um, I will begin with creating a group. So new group and we're going to call it luminosity. And I'm going to color code this group just so um, it makes it a lot easier to see. And when you're dealing with lots of layers, it makes it a lot easier to find different groups. So, we'll begin by creating a curve within that group, and as you can see, it has the same color. So you know it's within the group. And I'm going to duplicate this curve, and I'm going to name the top one Luminosity. And we're going to select the opacity value and it's going to be luminosity and we're going to rename this one, the bottom one, color and we're going to rename, uh, set the opacity for this to color um, so after you do that select the layer above your image layer and uh, we're going to create another adjustment layer and this one is going to be threshold. Now as you can see it's pretty much just black and white there is no color at all. Uh, basically it is showing you the highlight and the shadow areas um, and right now it's dead in the middle. Now this is the, the, the this is a histogram right here and this is what you would see in your camera. It's like a little box and it would have the tonal values of the image represented by this uh, black bar going up and, and going across. Um, Depending on your light, time of day, uh, your exposure, it will give you different representations within this box of how it looks. It might have a whole bunch of spikes, it might be overall to one side or the other, and um, what you want to do is you want to try and have this box, um, this, this, this um, histogram as close to the center as possible with no parts of it hitting the wall on left or the right side. The left side is your shadow area, the right side is your highlight area. And um, when you go to either side of the exposure too much, you start to lose detail in those areas, especially when you're actually right up against the wall. And that's called clipping. So um, that gives you a visual idea of what a uh, histogram is. And But this is the threshold and this is how we're going to use it. So we're going to begin by sliding to the right. So we're heading, we're we're 
basically going to show the hottest area. So we're dealing with highlights right now. As you can see, as the more I slide it to the right, the more the white disappears and it becomes all black. All right, so these are all the hottest areas of the image right now. And I'm going to zoom in, control alt zero on a PC. And you zoom in, you can see there's a lot more. So now I'm going to keep going to the right until there is only a few left or one left. Okay, so obviously this is as far as I can go on this image before they all disappear. So now we're going to zoom in all the way in to the maximum amount on the file. And if I slide to the right, you can see that this little dot here is actually a single pixel. Okay, And uh, so we're showing actual pixels now. So this is the hottest areas on my image and I'm going to now go to the luminosity layer and I'm going to on the uh, luminosity layer which is a curve I'm going to click on this button here and you'll see that the uh, eyedropper tool now shows up. I'm going to put it over the pixel, the white pixel, and I'm going to hit shift and it changes the shape of it again which is basically like a bullseye mark and I'm going to click my left mouse button on it and you can see it goes dead center every time within that pixel and it has a number one and this is good because we're going to actually be doing this twice once for highlights and once for shadows and I'm going to zoom out and you can see that there it is and we're going to go up here and you can see that the uh, panel changed from layers to info and info it would be up in your uh, windows and down here info is also F8 on your keyboard so um, this is important you're going to need to see this panel if you don't have it on your on your uh, on your uh, your workspace alright so now we're going to go to layers and we're going to go back down to threshold and we're going to slide this route, uh, all the way to the left now and you can see it's going to change all to white and all the black areas little dots are the blackest areas of the image. And I'm going to draw off over to the left side because I already know this is the darkest area. And when I shut off this layer, you're going to see that we're on the beach and it's like a piece of seaweed or a rock or a shell. I don't know what it is because it's too small. And we're going to turn back on the threshold layer. We're going to zoom in 100% on this area here. Okay, that's 100%. And I'm going to bring the threshold all the way to the left side. And as you can see, I'm at a zero on it, which means I've got as far as I can, and there's still some black with no detail in it, or very little detail in it. And even, even though this is pretty close to the center, it's still to the left side, so obviously this image is biased towards the uh, darker tones, which I intentionally do almost on all my images. Uh, when I'm shooting digitally. I, I, I prefer that it retains my highlights a lot easier and it's a lot easier to pull shadow detail out of a digital image than a highlight detail. Um, okay, so now we go up to the luminosity layer again. We click on this icon again here. Your mouse changes again to eyedropper tool. Excuse me, and then you press shift and re left click your mouse and, and we have a number coming up. It's number three, that's not right. Okay, let's try that again. Threshold, luminosity. There, that's better. All right, so number two comes up, and it's you can see that number one highlight area is um, 255, which is your maximum um, on the scale. Uh, for for uh, white and in blacks is zero which is your maximum you can go as well alright so we're going to zoom out and you can see that uh, the two um, points are here one and two alright so we'll go to layers go to threshold and you can delete it just by clicking on this here and it's gone alright so 
Now we'll go to luminosity, select the luminosity layer, select info, and now we're dealing with the actual curves. All right, so we'll begin with the highlight, and this is your highlight numbers right here. And I don't, I don't want it to be 255. I want to bring it down to 245. Basically, I find that that's a good starting point. So I'm going to drag this down. Oh, too far. And then just go up a couple numbers here, and now it's at 245. And then we'll go to Shadow, which is the left side down here. Click on that. And you see it's at 0, and I'm going to bring that up to 8. There. So I find that these are very good numbers to work with if you if you stay within this area of 245 and 8, uh, you should have um, pretty much the perfect balance uh, of detail in your images for print. Now, sometimes you're going to look at these numbers and they're going to be off. Uh, in this particular image, they're not. They're exactly all the same, 245, 245, 245. So this is your colors red, green, blue, and here it's all looks equal as well. And it's too bad, I, I would have liked to maybe had a, a different image for this, but what you would do in that case is you go to color. All right, make sure that this is says color up here as well. And then you go to info again. So now you're on the color layer, right? And so if this was off, like let's say uh, not 255, but like say 237, and this one is zero, you would take um, the highlight part here and you'd start moving it around until you got the colors perfect. Um, in other words you would have all the numbers line up so it, it would all like be uh, let's say 237 okay or uh, 240 and every single number here would be the same or they could even be just within one like uh, like let's say 237, 238, 238 that's okay too um, and that would do is it would pretty much do your color balance. Now, in, in as far as my whites go and my blacks go, um, this image is, is perfectly color balanced and that's why um, it's, it's uh, already at 255 right across the board here and zero here. So that's how you would deal with the color part of this. But uh, I'm more concerned with luminosity. Uh, color is something that, you know, it's nice to be able to do it this way as well. Um, but color is more subjective and sometimes you want an image to be very warm or an image is warm and there's nothing you, you don't want to make it neutral. So, But you do want to make sure that your luminosity is controlled perfectly and that you have good detail highlights and good shadow de highlights um, detail as well. Sorry. Uh, that way when you do go to print um, your image will have a nice set of tones right across the board. Now um, once again with the luminosity layer selected go to info. Now if I want to bump up the uh, the contrast of this image, um, you can do that and still not affect the highlight or the shadow detail. So what you do is you go in the middle of this. I'm just going to actually bring this up a little bit more, and I'm going to expand this so you can see it better. You can do that just by clicking on this icon right here, and I'm going to click right in the middle to create a point. Okay, so it is locked, and this is your shadow, this is your highlight, and I'm going to drag this down a little bit, and I'm going to increase the contrast of the image to make it more dramatic. Now, if I drag this down, you'll see that the numbers up here have not changed at all. It's still 8 for the shadow area and 245 for the highlight area. So, by increasing the contrast, I'm doing it to all the rest of the tones, but I am not doing it to the maximum whites or the maximum blacks, and of course you could by going too far with this affect that and you would just drag these points back or forth until you get to to the um, uh, lot of numbers that you wanted to retain the detail so that's how you do it if hope this tutorial helped you out and uh, your prints turn out beautifully my name is Paul Karens thank you for watching this tutorial and you can check out my blog and my website at paulkarens.com and the blog is paulcarens.com forward slash blog. The name of the blog is through the, f uh, through the Photographer's Eye. And there you'll find other tutorials and articles I've written about photography. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.